Quick volume test, and I'll be right back. Thank you. All right, we appear to be rolling, so let's just get started. Uh, this is kind of a continuation of last time. Uh, this is the thumbnail of the video, the last one, and uh, that was, well, if you, should, you should look at it, it's linked below. I'll quickly review it and move it forward with today's talk called is anti-gravity in big ironic air quotes merely wishful thinking and uh, how do we move ahead possibly are these kind of are these the people that are going to move this uh, effort to have some improved technology forward possibly if they could be convinced they certainly have the money to help and they seem like the kind of people that might be interested in, in this. We're not going to uh, psychologically evaluate them today, but we're going to wishfully think that maybe they are, and just, just review the entire situation in general. Now, when we left off here, I'll summarize that one-hour video with this clip. This is our bottom line. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's a reality to it and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increased knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. All right, well, that's the horse's mouth and we thank him for uh, telling us what they've been telling us. But have we really been listening to uh, you know, I, I guess we all like nod our head and say, yes, of course, you know, but does it sink in? Do we act on it or do we keep wishfully thinking that 
Well, they're going to wink and nod at what metamaterial results they have or what ideas they've uh, gained from signatures they might have seen or, you know, whatnot. He's telling you, and he's telling us, and, you know, don't count on it because that's their job. I mean, to be fair to them, you know, this guy was in the CIA and... Um, so are a lot of other people involved, and they have lifetime commitments to not break the seal. And if something comes up that is, uh, you know, in opposition to the best interests of the quote unquote deep state, as he just said, then they're not going to tell you that they're. Uh, Army crad a metamaterial study uh, revealed that the thing floated. They'll make up something about, oh, it withstood some bullets pretty well. We might look at it, you know. I mean, that's what I would do if I were them. But everyone's free to draw their own conclusions. That's just a very uninformed opinion. But, you know, when a guy come, like this comes out and tells you, you know, I don't know. Why wouldn't you take them uh, seriously? So, we move on. Like, what do we, what do, we do now? Well, the, here we are. This I just saw this tweet just now. Um, the old TTSA gang and the new Skyfort gang, they're talking about consciousness and dimensions and time and burning cigars and things. They've left that so-called project of theirs at TTSA with the old Skunk Works guy and uh, you know, very lofty uh, goals they had. That's, that seems to have gone away. So what do we do now? Or what does... Who's we? I don't know here, but... It's certainly, you know, worth considering moving on from them. But a lot of people already have. So what do we do? We try to get these guys interested. And we're not even close to that level yet. But how? You know, you try to sell them something like this. This was another video full of ideas full of a general principle, which I'll get into yet again, <clears throat> called light pumping and light bubbles and, you know, that sort of thing, which most of you have heard, heard already in previous uh, videos. So we're just going to skim over what that. I'm going to assume you already know what that idea is somewhat. Get into it a little more later, but... For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be go over that old ground again. So this was that last video I did was on this Twitter moment, Tall Terror Hurts Tales, and it's basically a sob story. Poor me, I tried to tell these guys what I think. They got no results, or did I? by their silence. I don't know. I really don't know. And um, <clears throat> just have to keep moving on anyway. Because they suggested that uh, something might have been used for something. And I'm saying, yes, of course it is. And then they went silent on it and changed their story. Now they're not in that business at all. But they are talking to Founders Fund guys. That's Mr. Weinstein, who works for Mr. Teal, big billionaire, old buddies with him. Mr. Musk here, going back to the PayPal days. I don't know, who knows what about the Silicon Valley stuff? I mean, who, who, you know how where, where they all link up? But when I see this guy sniffing around, Hal here from the old TTS gang who can say something but not too much and tell you he's not going to say anything to the point where you, you have to, you know, okay, we're going to take you at your word and uh, 
go around you. But is he trying to, uh, I don't know how many winks and nods went on in there and how serious they are about it. But if Founders Fund, Mr. Teal, who Mr. Weinstein works for, who is buddies with our space uh, entrepreneur, Mr. Musk, wow, that seems like quite a coincidence or quite a, you know, maybe they're trying to get those guys to look at it, okay? We're here to look at. I'm here to look at. So are some other people. Oh, here we are. Alien scientist. He's another guy who you all should know. And here he is trying to tell Lou Elizondo, formerly of TTSA, companion of uh, Hal Putoff here. And uh, he's, he's trying to also see sending a tweet suggesting this or that. But they're not... They're not uh, talking both ways on that very much. I mean, we got this from Hal. We should be glad we got that. Uh, Elizondo doesn't talk about this stuff much at all, and even less anymore. So, um, so let's move on with this, I guess. Well, here we go. You know, and now, now we're at the point where we have a new YouTube movie out called Was TTSA a Techno Scam? Now, I'm not here to make an opinion, have an opinion on that or, to, uh, but, you know, promote it or just discount it or anything else. It is a, it's up to you to decide. Uh, in any case, they were working on something and it's gone. Invest, quoting from the tweet, investors were promised a craft and not just propulsion R&D. Their science division quickly shut down in favor of entertainment. So, be that as it may, who is going to step up to the Teals and Musks and present them with alternatives if they're interested, which if they're not, there's, that's a real problem. But I think they are, you know, they will be, will troll them into it. Elon Musk is not the only troll on Twitter. So, you know, we just keep trying. Anyway, there are other people out there too, which we're going to discuss in a, in a moment. So... Where was I? Okay, with TTSA, was it a scam? I don't know. The, uh, the YouTube movie is linked in the description. I recommend if you're interested in this, you should watch it. Um, and well, okay, so I responded to that tweet about that. Self-promoting as usual on Twitter, that's what it's for. And I'm saying, I don't know about that, but say, pay attention to me, and we should all band together and go after these guys or do something. At least they're, they're seemingly someone interested in this stuff in general. And, well, here's another tweet from a disappointed... It just seems like it all fell together last week that, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about this independent of that video, independent of me, independent of, of each other here. But we're all, all on the same uh, path, I suppose. So, promises, promises. Yeah, here's the semi-notorious thing that never happened. I don't know the details of it. I wasn't paying too much attention to it. Uh, so that, that's for other people to discuss, was it a scam or not. But it's interesting, you might have, you know, I, I don't know. So here's a, here's the alien scientist again. Again, <clears throat> in the spirit of moving on. Do you want to build UAP tech? Look no further. Manhattan Project. Yeah. Which is a good way to look at it. I don't think it'll be that expensive, but... He's saying, hey, you know, let's, let's, uh, 
let's forget about the past and uh, go forward with those of us that are interested in the technical aspects of anti-gravity, again in air quotes, and the like. Warp, uh, what do you call it, warp speed, or warp drive. And, yeah, here's an example of another guy that was interested here who spoke at APEC, American Anti-Gravity, link below, and he, uh, he was giving us a little talk about how to, you know, get startup funding and the like, which is, you know, Founders Fund, which Teal owns, is a big startup fund. And he walked us through the steps, which I kind of know. I, before this uh, disclosure movement and UFO Twitter, I, you know, I've been trying to <clears throat> do something with this for about 10 years. And I guess about 2014, I started going to the startup uh, gatherings and pitch fests and things like that in Atlanta and in Pittsburgh. So I picked up about as much as I can get that's uh, useful without going up there myself without a prospective... Biggest, where I stop with that crowd is, do you have a prospective customer? Oh, look, here's one. His name is Elon Musk. Ever heard of him? And here's the, you know, the, your alleged, you know, your hypothetical, you're pitching to this guy. Because uh, he's one that loans money. They can build companies very easily. They've done it over and over and over and over. And again, wishful thinking. Wouldn't it be nice if he took an interest and he said, let's fund this stuff. Yeah, it would be. Pigs can fly. But they might. They will if they do what I tell them to do. But let's keep going. Uh, so, the, yeah, this is about more about the end of uh, TTSA. And that's... Here we are again with these guys talking about consciousness and where do you go when you sleep. Stuff like that. That's what they're doing now. They're not at all talking about science and technology. You know, very rare, you know, certainly not technology, but science somewhat. But it's not going the way it once was. So into the vacuum steps me and whoever else is coming along on the ride. And uh, here's a little joke here from you. Yeah, this is fake, by the way. I saw this. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is perfect uh, timing. Where uh, it's a tweet uh, for those of you listening and all watching the screen from Elon Musk saying, Next, I'm buying To the Stars Academy and getting rid of Tom DeLong. And that's the, the group uh, we were referring to before, which is now out of the technology end of this. And what else do we have here? I think I'm going to stop and take a break for one moment. See you. All right, picking up again where I left off. I must admit I lost my place. I practiced yesterday, but it's almost like this isn't two parts of the second part. So let's go on and continue. Wrong one, tiny webcam. All right, that's the right webcam. Now we're back over here and we're starting again. So here we are with these two guys again, some other pictures of these fellas. And it's such a small world, you know? Here's the guy, you've all heard, the, most of you have heard, the famous quote from somebody in Silicon Valley that said, we wanted flying cars, but all we got was 140 characters, which is now 280. Anyway, referring to Twitter. So we wanted this 
hard tech, this physical, you know, I don't know, industrial revolution, I'll call it, whatever it is, the third wave, the fifth gear, whatever the heck it is. And we, you know, we got a lot of, we got the metaverse. Okay, that's fine for some people, but other people, especially old people like me, we're kind of more in the physical world. And I think that's what he meant by that quote. Well, that quote was Mr. Teal here said that. And when you think about things that fly, here's his buddy here, the rocket man. So what a small world. And it turns out, I, wise guy, smart Alex, what's his name? Elon Musk. About the flying cars, a couple of years ago this happened. 2019. Where does the time go? So, this is funny. Elon Musk, the new roadster, this is when he shot that car into space, I suppose. And now he's cracking a joke about the new roadster. It's got to have thrusters in it. The new Tesla automobile. You know, hey, that's cool. That's fine, except I'm really doing it, and I'm not using thrusters, I'm using pumps, but he's right, he's right there, he's over the target. So I'm there to chime in, this is a Twitter moment link below, anyone can look at it, you don't have to belong to Twitter, or be logged in or anything like that. So he posts that funny thing, and Marcus Brownlee here says... The thing is, I feel like you're not joking. And Musk says, I'm not. We'll use SpaceX cold gas thruster system with ultra high pressure air in a composite overwrapped pressure vessel in place of the two rear seats. Yeah, I mean, the guy, you gotta give it to him for he landed the rockets in reverse. Okay, we're gonna do that too, only differently, but that's good, he did it. They said it couldn't be done. Private industry did it. What else can they do? Hint. All right. So I see him, and uh, he gets 400 responses on that, and maybe he saw this. You know, who knows? I doubt it. But And I saw I linked this, this uh, LinkedIn article I wrote. It's kind of dated, but it's okay, you know. For its time, it'll, it was ahead of its time. It's, I'd write it differently today, and I probably should update those that site as well, but I just don't use it. But anyway, here I am, trying to be ahead of my time, which I am. Uh, saying, hey, go, you know, just go look at this thing. Humor me and click on it and comment on it. If the guy retweeted it, it'd probably be built by now. Anyway... And I explained the basic idea of light pumping, okay? I said in the headline here, I say, extreme hot air balloon using continuous radiation pressure. Same idea. And I propose a graphene carbon, I don't know what I propose exactly. Anyway, <clears throat> but it's right. And I've improved on it since. But anyway. And then I'm kidding around, like, ha, 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 you put your car in space, I'm putting mine in it, too. And I'm going to have a competing car line to the Tesla called the Lang Muir. Lang Muir, he was a, he was a uh, hydrogen genius, he was a genius, period. Uh, Irving Lang Muir, I didn't plan on speaking about him today, because just Google him, Irving Lang Muir. Anyway, he's very inspiring as to the power of hydrogen. And I'm saying the first flying car is going to be based on this design, which I was driving that thing around the time I, uh, I came up with this idea. Anyway, so Musk goes on. Oh, no. Okay, this is another tweet by him later, a couple years later. Thinks he's funny, right? If you leave hydrogen out in the sun long enough, it starts talking to itself. All right, that's funny, sort of. But I say actually it starts displaying inertia-defying anti-gravity behavior as it moves through the phases. 
Did you ever notice how these so-called gases can do that when it's the same damn piece of matter it was before it saw the light? Yes, those gases can be frozen. They can be liquid. The only reason they're flying anti-gravity is because they're pumping light and not being a frozen solid piece of ice somewhere. You see, if you, you get the light moving through and around the mass, it'll lift it. You know, first, it'll ruin it. It'll, it'll uh, give it power over. I'm not technically wrong, but it'll make inertia less effective by being a liquid. A liquid will roll around, you know that, but it won't fly up in the air. When you add more, even more light, and by light I mean, high, I mean visible, infrared, the usual suspect, ultraviolet, visible. It starts and it will go up into the air. All I'm saying is, take your spaceship, uh, you know, and, and do the same thing. How do you do that? You do that with these metamaterials. And it's a souped up balloon. You can call it that, but a souped up balloon is going to, uh, I don't know what. Can I, can I promise you 98% the speed of light? I don't know. Maybe 99 and a half. I really don't. I'm not that deep into it, but I'm getting you into the 90s for sure. All right? That's all I ask. Help me. So, so I, uh, I show, I, I, <clears throat> I link that thing for him. And I have some other old tweet saying, look at this. I've been saying this for years. Blah, blah, blah. Here's one of, you know, trying to get the idea across how hydrogen can be a pump. Yeah, it's an, an atom is working that way. And it's becoming more and more anti-gravity or inertia defying the more and more you do it. And if you get 70 trillion of them per square inch on your flipping Buick La Sabra, it's going to fly around Mars and do a donut around your Tesla which is just floating there, okay? And this, this is how the, uh, how the uh, hydrogen, how you put it together, put it together into a metamaterial. And here we are with uh, carbon nanotubes with adsorbed and interstitial hydrogen. Now that was before I learned about graphene, which, or graphene, which this is graphene, but it's, anyway... Different ways to skin the cat. If you're not in such a hurry, take this one. It's probably cheaper. Anyway, it's going to work. And this is an informal argument for anti-gravity. And what does it tell you? It tells you balloons, clouds are your archetypes. If you got Einstein and Newton into a room, what would they... What, what would Einstein tell Newton about why a balloon flies? Hmm... I spelled it out for you because I went back over it and dumbed it down for myself and found something obvious. Anyway, yeah, when I came up with that light breather, I swear, after, two months after I put it on the Twitter, this ESA comes out with an air breather. And I'm saying, all right, what's the next step? You're up there where there's barely any air. You know, well, read it for yourself. And what else is it? And I'm still tweeting on this flying car stuff. Flying cars and the possible. Yes, very possible. And we're going to do it if it kills me, which it might. Or I'll die trying. I'm retired now. I got nothing better to do than troll these guys mercilessly until they give in. And here I'm quoting myself about conservation of momentum. Yeah, it's picking up momentum from the light going through it at the speed of light. And a very tiny um, level of the skin of the craft, atom by atom, atom by atom. Okay, how many atoms are on there? How many atoms are moving things through them at the speed of light? It adds up. 
And well, here I am pontificating about what? Gravity waves and gravitons. Uh, I won't go too far into that, but if you understand that a graviton is probably a spin-2 particle and a photon is a spin-1, you can see how because of the shapes of these things, the light's going to go whipping right through a densely packed thing of gravitons barely affected by gravity or inertia but as soon as you get you know one more shred into that, that a, a photon it be, you know it's a three now it's a proton and now it's mass it's going to sink like a stone and then it's a four it's an electron it sinks like a stone of uh, your electrogravitic stuff keep trying it but i don't think it's going it, you know it's not going to give you enough horsepower anyway the next tweet what do i say there hmm okay i'm just spelling it out a bit and here i introduce graphene again and i'm saying hey it's a uh it's just a souped up balloon it's not you know it's nothing to be afraid to think about um uh, you can think of it as a, you know, dis disentanglement, a smoothing of the local gravity mass fabric caused by light passing through, allowing the mass a greater degree of freedom. Okay, that sounds a little fancy, but that's the same thing a balloon does and a cloud does and an airship does and these flippant flying saucer tic tacs and gimbals and whatever they're seeing, which we don't know about, but we get a lot of good hints about. And we can thank T.S. T TSA for their work on that. Uh, if you we were dissing them too hard before. Uh, where, where was I? Uh, yeah. that's a, Add that to the archetypes. You've seen them, okay? I haven't. I never saw anything. I have no axe to grind on the disclosure front. I don't know. You know, if it happens, it happens. Good. If it doesn't. I tend to think it probably have uh, other intelligent life and all that stuff, but who cares? And, I'm, and it's not a big deal with me. What's a big deal with me is how do you compete with that? Or if, if they don't exist, exist, how do you just, just improve? improve? How would you like it if your car weighed 25% less and your gas bill went down again? How about if it weighed 75% less? How about... Oh, I don't know. I just randomly thought of a wheelchair. How about a floating wheelchair? Hmm. Wouldn't that make life easier for people? It's just 80 zillion ways we are not using this major force of nature here. And you can call it, that's ah, just simply buoyancy. That's not, ah. Well, yeah, it is. Soup it up. Nobody's looked at it sad all right where was i uh i skipped ahead there on the buoyancy anyway yeah it's you, you know you could also call it field propulsion you could call it all kinds of things because if your field around you and you're you're entangled in your mass of your spacecraft or your buick into something that is not affected by gravity and that something is a lot more bigger and powerful and you're controlling it and it, your mass suddenly becomes zilch. Uh, so I think that can be done. We see it in front of our eyes. It can be optimized, improved, however you want to say it. Pardon me. <clears throat> and then here's another tweet about what it looks like close up here, this thing here. And I did a video on that. Look for this. Look for a thumbnail that looks like this. And you'll see these giant photons going into these tiny atoms, which get all that momentum and then blast that stuff out. And you cannot believe how small that is. All right. A piece of light 
This is small. This is supposed to be 6,000 times bigger than that. But I, this is all I could fit on there that would make sense. So what I'm saying is, and look how small this stuff is. Let's go up here. Oh, yeah. That's air right there, okay? And even these are too small. So this giant light is is enveloping this thing we're making. And this is the skin of our Buick LeSabre or Flying Tic Tac. And so it's not gonna it's not gonna be encumbered by air. You're pulling that out of the air. The air is like not interested in what's happening in this general area here. And it's getting pushed out and pushed out of the way. Or it's just not coming into being sucked into the whirlpool of this thing. Because why would it? Anyway, that's a whole nother video. It tells you how it works at the level of like of a butterfly wing. Now that's another video I have. And why does the water roll off the butterfly? Why does it seem to float? Not fly all the time. It's hard to see it in our human eyes and brains. But the thing is is flipping around. It's odd. Uh, people are going to look into it. And they're going to see once again. Kelly was right. That to some extent. I believe. I don't think they're completely anti-gravity air quotes. But they're playing. They're playing a game there. They're not Newtonian either. They're, they're a hybrid. All right. So, moving down these tweets where, okay, here's a very old uh, internet image I put up. It's one of the first ones. And it, this goes back to the terahertz issue that we discussed in that last video called Terahertz Tall Tales. And this is where I first thought of, first dared put this out. That perhaps if you were going to pump light, could you pump space? I remember thinking I was insane thinking this. Uh, I just thought, well, I'll put it out there anyway, you know. So what if I'm wrong? I mean, I'm not going to get fired for being a crackpot. I'm I'm retired and I was never in that business. So my. Uh, reputation you know <laughs> is non-existent anyway so here I hear I'm saying well what about 3k CMB which is 3 Kelvin deg Kelvin degrees cosmic microwave background radiation now that's just light that's cold temperature to us that's in the minus 400s and the terahertz Depending on if you're using two terahertz, one terahertz, a half a terahertz, whatever it is, you're you're in that range. So if you're flying your supposed secret material that fell off a flying saucer, looks like a terahertz waveguide. That's because it's supposed to look like a terahertz waveguide. So we're you know that's what we're going to use. Ultimately, we're going to. You know, the waveguide, it's going to pull, vis here's the sun. It's going to pull visible in the atmosphere. It's going to pull some heat, warm heat, etc. You know, all the stuff we get it down here. That's for a floating tic-tac. Uh, infrared, ultraviolet, the occasional x-ray might come through, I don't know. Radio waves. Radar waves from pesky uh, Air Force, Navy pilots. Anyway. So, but when it gets up out into space, it's going to want to pump what's there, which is some visible, you know, all that, that other stuff. But it's in an ocean of terahertz. Anyway, that's where I first introduced that idea. So I guess I posted it there three years ago and probably originated it two years before that. I don't know. Um, so... Elon Musk again. Another quote from three years ago. Advanced usable rockets are all we need to become a multi-planet civilization. Once we have a city on Mars, 
interplanetary travel will create a forcing function for vast improvements in spaceflight. Well, I'm forcing you now, okay? Yeah, we're going to use rockets for a while. But, time to start ramping it up with the tinfoil hats that Hal Pudov told you they're not tinfoil hats or something. Something like that. Let me twist his words some way like that. But he did say we're not going to tell you if they're not. Something like that. Anyway, who cares? So I answer Musk and I say, you only got 118 on that one. Yes, but for how long? Newton has served us well. Let him rest. It's time to start listening to Einstein. And that's me trying to budge him like, who the hell is this idiot? Saying that, we got to give up my rockets. Well, not yet, but think about it. And then I post a little picture, a little gif of a little light pumping Tic Tac, which may or may not exist, but should. Either way, it should. It could. And here is Jazz Shaw commenting. We are never going to travel to the stars unless we come up with a better method of propulsion than essentially building a huge stack of dynamite, sitting on top of it, and lighting it. Thank you, Jazz Shaw, because that reminded me that people saying that Kelly is just buoyancy. I'm saying these rockets are nothing but a, a, a firecracker under a tin can like we used to do over behind the Bradford Woods store. Okay, you optimized it. Very good, Elon. What else can you optimize? Product development much? That's what we need. Throw us a bone. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I posted this little cartoon guy here, you know. Yeah, that's Newton. You can call me a souped-up balloon, but that's fine. Because I want the flux for the bucks instead of the bang for the bucks. No one is looking at it. Nobody but me for 10 years. And a lot of people will come up to speed really quickly. Mm. Boy, I just see them, see them every day studying this stuff. Like, I think this guy who wrote the Hydrogenated Graphene User's Guide, a federal, federally funded thing that tells you everything you want to know about the basic 101 entry-level metamaterial that gets you in the game with a Tic Tac. All right, and I guess that's a little graphic about it. It's supposed to be light passing through. Go. Go. <laughs> light passing through these hydrogen atoms, but it really looks like reflected water, and I can't get it to go any faster because it won't go any faster on the gift machine. The free one. Anyway, and there's Vanta Black for some reason, which absorbs. Oh, yeah, here we are. This is your basic overview, okay? Vanta Black absorbs because it's black and it's made out of carbon nanotubes, etc. Your basic graphene is a good waveguide. It'll move a lot of different kind of waves. And all you have to do is tinker with it to do all kinds of stuff. And if you want to really absorb it and not use what, you know, to start. To start, I think you have to do this just so people feel good about it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Because they know a balloon works, they know buoyancy works, but they, ha they you know, you just start there. Because a pure wave guy, yeah, that's what you're seeing on crash spaceships, perhaps. But are we going to make one of those tomorrow? They're making them now, but is it going to be demonstrable and usable yet on a, on a craft or something like that? I, you know, I haven't seen that level of it. All the scientific work on that, and if you follow me on Twitter, which I recommend you do, you will see that all that stuff's done for 
communication signals, sensing, et cetera, et cetera. They haven't thought of this uh, application yet for a lot of this stuff, but that's what tinfoil hats are for. And that's what we've done for them. That's where I add the value. And I will go on on why, how this has to do with the flying saucers they're seeing at these links here. The five observables are really the five utterly predictables because I say so. And if you want to argue with me, come on Twitter and do so. So now we're done. You're up to date and that's it. We move along from this to what oh okay these are a couple of quick and dirty because some of you people are, know that i've been saying this others are like what is he babbling about okay here's the simple whoops i tried to simple it down like gee i wish i thought of it this way but in hindsight this is the way i would have thought of it and here's the quick version and it basically says, if you want to move at the speed of light, if you want to float around, copy things that do that already. Don't try to make mass into some magical thing that it is not. Instead, copy nature. Or copy early simple designs that already work, like a balloon. Uh, nature being, of course, I have to mention this, the trillions of tons of anti-gravity water hanging over your head, unless it's a clear day like it is here for once. That was water in the pond, in the river, and frozen snow before. But now it's up there suddenly. Why? It's pumping light. It's simple as a phase. You learn the phases of the elements in very early schooling. Anyway. So this, uh, this is the no-brainer stuff. There's a, there's a uh, video on that, on this thing where I go over it in detail here. To move like light, be like light, be the ball, Danny. And it just, it just simple, simplifies the thinking of it with very little scientific jargon. Just reason. That's why I have this philosopher up here, Aristotle. Who I believe, and I'm trying to find the killer quote. I'm going to buy his book, I guess. I saw it. I'm like, that's so brilliant. I didn't even save it where I found it. Because I figured it's so obvious that it's everywhere. You'll find it with one Google search. <laughs> I can't find it. Find a trillion other things he said, but not the most important thing. Anyway, I'm going to take a sip. Thank you for waiting. I'm half done. <clears throat> I needed that <clears throat> cold coffee. So, well, he said something about, he observed the phases. He said something like, you know, I don't know, translated to ancient Greek through Middle English. Ye stuff, thou movest when thou warm heat on it, you know. He's seeing the same thing that, you know, water in the sun evaporating, but, you know, something simple, and it made a very general, pardon me, observation about it, and he's not into the energy levels and the Raman frequencies and all that, which is important, but you can understand this without that. And when I say understand, I mean a general principle. Uh, here I call it cheating. Shameless mimicry. Foolproof. Exploit the insight by attaching mass to light itself, which already has those abilities, instead of attempting to change mass into what it is not. You know, just bumper stickers like that. Anyway, the next one... And we're winding down. We're getting there. Uh, light pumping. This is the more scientific uh, one. And this com compares it with, it's, uh, you know, the other competing space age proposed technologies of 
gravitational wave generation, gravitational lensing. I mean, all this stuff, yeah, it might work, but there's always a secret sauce or there's always a massive amounts of energy or there's always a metamaterial that somebody else has to figure out, but uh, the calculations are done. I mean, it, it, it just dead, they all dead end somewhere. Mine does not dead end. Uh, mine needs a kickstart. Uh, but, and it, it's in nature, so it's going to happen anyway. Like I said, I will die trying, or someone else will do it. Because it's going to happen, because it's right there. And the idea is falsifiable. It is unfalsified. Uh, it imitates and mimics nature. In other words, you're, you're not going to, ultimately this thing is idiot proof. So, we'll have those arguments later. Yeah, it's buoyancy, so optimize it. Have you optimized it? Pretend it's a f alien from uh, 5,000 years ahead of you, when it's really, they're like 50 years ahead. 50 to, uh, I don't know, it could be as little as 50 in our terms. Because I think we can do that in 50 years. Anyway, they're going to say... What's the matter with you? You're stuck. Why are you stuck? Why haven't you optimized buoyancy like we have? But you think that's dumb, don't you? Well, no, it isn't. That's why we're zipping around you. So, those, some of that stuff, I'm winding down now. And I'm saying, go look at my other stuff. If that didn't make sense, go back and maybe it will. So at this point, I'm going to take a break and prepare for the outro. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Over and out and adios.